Another blast from the past today on what it's like. 1936 Cadillac Series 3660 Fleetwood Convertible Coupe. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. Picture this. You just obtained a classic car that you'd like to know more information about. Or perhaps you've owned these cars in the past and you're just here to reminisce. Either way, we feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that tend to get lost at the bottom of the basket. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. If you're in the market for a 1936 Cadillac Series 3660 Fleetwood Convertible Coupe, you're in luck. This one is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall in Morgantown, Pennsylvania. For those that have never heard of this place, let me tell you, it's like car heaven. It's like dying and going to car heaven. It's absolutely epic. And the best of all is they don't charge admission. For more information, pricing, and pictures of the car, click the link below after the show. Let's talk 1936 Cadillac model lineup. For 1936, Cadillac was offered in three engine choices, the V8, V12, V16. V8 could be had in three series. Series 60 was at the bottom with a wheelbase of 121 inches. Series 70 followed with 131 inch wheelbase. Series 75 with a wheelbase of 138 inches. Stepping up to the V12, it came in two series. Series 80 with a wheelbase of 121 inches. Series 85 with a wheelbase of 138 inches. V16 only came in one series and that was the Series 90 with a wheelbase of 154 inches. Hey everyone, Future J here. So after recording this episode and plugging some pictures in, I did some research and I'm not 100% sure if this is a Series 60 or a Series 70, but it's definitely a V8 Cadillac. I went with Series 60 because the interior doesn't live up to the Series 70's interiors, but it has the Series 70 grille. So I just wanted to clarify that up front, that is the hardest part about doing classic cars, especially ones that have millions of body style offerings. Series 60 could be had as a coupe, touring sedan, or convertible coupe. Cadillac offered the Series C from 1936 to 1938 to bridge the pricing gap between Cadillac and LaSalle, which was Cadillac's junior brand. For those that don't know, GM had a go at junior branding of all of their makes except for Chevy. GM called the program Companion Makes. Oldsmobile had Viking, Oakland had Pontiac, Buick, Marquette, Cadillac, LaSalle. Pontiac and Oakland switched, making Pontiac the new GM staple instead of Oakland. All the other companies died off in the 30s except for LaSalle, which lasted until 1940. Getting back to the Cadillac Series 60, this era of Cadillac Series 60 used a prefix for, say, like 3660. The 36 stood for the year. 3760 would be for 1937, etc. Series 60 would continue on and off throughout 1993. Cadillac offered this Series 60 from 1936 to 1938, built on the GM B-body platform, along such cars as the Oldsmobile L-Series, Buick Century, LaSalle Series 50, the Cadillac 3660 competed with the Packard 120 series. Buyers could also shop the Chrysler Airflow and Lincoln Zephyr. Let's talk specs. 196 inches long, 65.8 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 121 inches. It weighs 3,940 pounds. Price, $1,725, which is equivalent to you spending $36,983.26 in the year 2023. Total 1936 Cadillac production was 12,913 units, of which total Series 60 was 6,712 units. Only one engine on offer. 322 cubic inch displacement monoblock V8. What's a monoblock? The 322 monoblock was introduced in 1936 for the Series 60. It was designed with the intent to be the next power plant to reduce production costs of the 353 V12. Monoblock cylinders and crankcase were cast as a single unit and they used hydraulic lifters for reliability. 322 cubic inch displacement monoblock V8 5.3 liters. It's good for 125 horsepower at 3400 RPM, 155 pound feet of torque at 1000 RPM with a compression rating of 6.25 to 1. Only one transmission on offer, three speed selective sliding synchro. This car is absolutely 
gorgeous. Everywhere you look, there is a new line, a new style to look at. Look at how these headlights are mounted. They have a pedestal, but they're mounted into the side of this. And the headlights themselves, they almost look like torpedoes. Just look at the way that these fenders are designed. Look at the valley here. Four chrome indentations there, strips that go down. Has a little bit of a crease here. And it continues as it goes back. Just check out that design from this angle. It's absolutely stunning. I love all of that. Nice and Proud says it's a Cadillac V8. Definitely getting some Packard vibes with this whole piece here. Just check out the lady. I absolutely love this fender design coming down here when you look at it from this angle just look at how massive that fender is I love the bright work here stainless check out the running boards look at how wide these running boards are here's my foot for reference I wear size 12 but it tapers back here it's not nearly as wide back here as it is up here Coming around to the back, just check out these fenders back here. These fenders don't protrude nearly as much as the ones in the front. Looking at the back to the front, there's a massive valley in between the body and the fender, whereas back here, it doesn't have that. There's a little bit of one here. It's just styled really, really nice. Just check out these taillights see how this point comes down when it comes past the light it gets into a, a more of a shape point and then it comes down I absolutely love when car companies from the 30s and 40s have this line at the back it's very quaint so notice there's two spots for you to get into down here and up there let's start down here this is the trunk section I love when you pull that up, it catches on here so it stays up. Spare tire, the trunk section isn't that big for as big of a car this is. So to release this, you just pick up on it a little bit and then the trunk will go pulled back down. So what's this one then for? This one's for the rumble seat. So that's what the rumble seat would look like when it's in the upright position. If you have this top on, you don't have to have a conversation with the people that are sitting back here. It's like the mother-in-law suite back here. But if you had the top down, then everybody's part of the conversation. And there is storage space in here as well. So you could technically put the rumble seat up and put stuff in here and it could act as a second trunk. To get into the rumble seat, You would step on here, then step on here, and then climb in there. I think if you stepped on the running board, it would be too far of a too far of a step to step over there. You wouldn't be able to make it. So you'd have to step on the bumper support or here to make it to here and then get inside there. Coming up and getting inside, but before we do, just check out this door handle. It's very spear-like. If you got in a car accident, this would probably kill you if you're on the receiving end of that. Nothing about that says safe, but it's super cool though. The door, the door feels solid. It doesn't have a whole lot of heft to it, but I think that's because the hinges take most of the weight off of it. This looks like real wood. It actually feels like real wood too. And then it's probably leather. 
armrest window crank for the big window and that's how it operates and just check that out it's all chromed out i love the design of it the shape this is the vent window and this is the crank for it that is a big vent window it's also shaped different than any other vent window i've seen so far this is the door handle to get out just look how far forward it is it's all the way up here that's kind of cool coming down inside the pedal box down here hand brake high beam switch clutch brake gas pedal backing up just take a look at this interior there's even storage behind the seats that's how big this car is So that's what the door sounds like closing. Here's what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person looks like. I love the over the hood impression of this car. It's absolutely incredible. That hood is really long. The lady's leading the way. And I love the fact that you can see that fender and those lights over on this side. As well as the steering wheel and the dashboard. Just looks incredible. Here's what under the steering wheel looks like. I wore size 34 pants, so if you were a little bit bigger than me, you could probably fit underneath here as well. I think 34, I'm sorry, 36, 40 could fit under here pretty good as well. On to the button switches and knobs. Starting on the left-hand side, moving right, headlight switch, starter button, water temperature, gas gauge, oil pressure, amp meter. This car has turn signals, which were added because the first car to get blinking turn signals in the US of A was in 1939 with the Buick. At the top of the dash, there's a compass. Moving towards the center of the dash, speedometer with odometer, tripometer inside of it. Cigar lighter, map lights, choke, key, hand throttle, clock. Windshield wipers are located at the top of the dash in the middle of where the two pieces of glass meet. Moving up here, there are some sun visors, but they're really small. Check that out, they're not very big. There's my hand for reference. Uh, rear view mirror notice it's small petite and another sun visor over here for the passengers and just look at how these sun visors operate they're on like a rod and they swivel it's an interesting design i've never seen sun visors designed like that before they can they can swing windshield wipers on both sides notice it's a split windshield this is a convertible top to release the top, here's a part here, there's a catch there, there's a catch there. This is what I look like behind the wheel, and there's tons of headroom, and this is a convertible, just like I said, so if there isn't enough room, you could take the top off and you'd have all kinds of space. But let's talk about these seats. These seats are super comfortable. It feels like you're sitting in the most, the nicest leather couch that you own, or possibly have ever owned. I don't know if this is real leather, but it's 1936. I would assume that it's real leather. It's really nice. On to the glove box test. Here's our test subject. Here's my hand for reference. Here is our glove box in question. And notice this is steel. It's, it's actually kind of heavy. And just notice how these hinges are. That's pretty cool. It almost fits. It just doesn't. I just wanted to show you this real quick. So notice back here, and notice it kicks up towards the front. It meets up with the uh, window trim. Also check out these, these are the defrosters. They blow the uh, hot air towards the window so that you can see. Coming to the under the hood section, this hood is extremely heavy. So there it is, Flathead V8 Cadillac. Okay, I'm gonna go to the other side. So getting in the other side, it's the same thing. Just pull up on this. It's probably extremely heavy like it was on the other side. 
just check out how everything is laid out. On to the pros and cons. Unfortunately, this car isn't in the complete book of collectible cars, so I am getting all of these pros and cons from general observations. On the positive side, absolutely stunning, but not over the top like higher up Cadillac models. Cheaper to buy and still affordable. Cheaper to maintain than the bigger Cadillacs as well. Trunk and rumble seat combo built solid. Cons, it's essentially a LaSalle with a Cadillac badge. Super heavy hood. All right, now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give me both the correct name of the band as well as song title. Both correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. No obligation to join. If you're interested, the link will be in the description. So if I catch you on here or on Facebook, just know that I appreciate everything. And until next time, but before we go, here's some previews for our next episode. 1941 Buick. I can't wait to show this car. There's some really interesting quirks about this car. And that's going to be coming up next on what it's like. And until next time, until that date, I'm not entirely sure if it's going to be tomorrow or the day after. Toodaloo!